friends and welcome to yet another series of Veer Nari's outreach program, a Metamorphs initiative and I am Shakuntala Ajit Bandarkar. Metamorphs is a non-profit voluntary group by veterans committed to nation building, restoring social values in society, nurturing lost glory of veterans and contributing positively in whichever way we can. Do visit www.metamorphs.org for more information. Dear friends and viewers, do share, subscribe, like, and press the bell icon to get more notifications for such enlightening sessions. Do feel free to write in your comments and give your suggestions on many more such interesting sessions which you want us to conduct. We will be happy to bring them to you. Also, I request you to watch this video till the end. By the way, today we have the family of Commodore K.P. Gopal Rao, MVC, VSM, to narrate the tales of 1971 war for the present generation. How it feels when you know that your parent is going to face the war, isn't it? Going to be interesting? Yes. So we have with us Miss Tara Rao, the eldest daughter, Miss Savita Rao, and Mr. Vinay Rao amongst us to share their experience of their dear dad who represented the Indian Navy during the 1971 war. Welcome to the Rao family. K.P. Gopal Rao, MBC, BSM, was born at Madurai on 13th November 1926. He was commissioned into the Indian Navy on 21st April 1950. Commodore K.P. Gopal Rao was a specialist in gunnery. In 1971, Commodore Gopal Rao was commanding officer of INS Kilton in the Eastern Naval Command. However, with the war looming against Pakistan, Admiral S.M. Nanda, the then Chief of Naval Staff, personally appointed Commodore K.P. Gopal Rao to join the Western Naval Command so as to command Operation Trident against Pakistan. The government gave the go-ahead to attack Karachi Harbor after Pakistan carried out an attack on India without declaring war. This was the first offensive naval action from the Indian side. On the night of 4th and 5th December 1971, during the Indo-Pak operation, a small task group of the Western fleets under Commodore Gopal Rao carried out an offensive sweep on the port of Karachi, notwithstanding the threat of enemy fire, surface and submarine attack, Commodore Gopal Rao then led his task group deep into enemy waters and located two group of large enemy warships. Despite heavy gunfire from enemy destroyers, Commodore Rao carried out a determined attack which resulted in the sinking of enemy destroyers and one minesweepers. After the surface engagement with enemy warships, Commodore Rao led his task group to invade deep enemy waters and bombarded Karachi port, setting fire to oil and other installations in the harbor. In this operation, Commodore Kasargod Patnashetti Gopal Rao displayed conspicuous gallantry and outstanding leadership in the best traditions of the Indian Navy and awarded the first Mahavir Chakra in the Indian Navy. As a result of this, the Karachi port was paralyzed. It is to mark this operational victory. The Indian Navy celebrates Navy Day on December 4th. K.P. Gopal Rao, MVC, VSM, was born on 13th November, 1926 in Madurai. He was commissioned in the Navy on 25th, 21st April, 1950. He did long gunnery course in HMC Portsmouth 
UK and staff course at Defence Service Staff College, Wellington. He was Commanding Officer Kadmat, CO Kilton, Commanding Officer Amba. He set up the Pitya Training School at Vizag and was its first CEO, that is the Commanding Officer. He was Chief of Staff, Eastern Naval Command. This was a captain's post in 1974. Today, the same is a Vice Admiral post and CEO, Sirstas. He was awarded the Vishish Seva Medal in January 1971 for setting up the Training Institute at Vizag. We lost this war hero on 9th August 2021. Let us listen to his proud family about his experiences during the war and how he was felicitated by the president. So you all are the children of a very decorated war hero and indeed Metamorphs is honored and privileged to have you with our session today. I would request Ms. Tara Rao to now share her experiences of her dear dad. See, with war clouds looming, uh, Admiral S.M. Nanda, the then chief of Navy staff, he had personally chosen my father to head the first naval offensive against Pakistan. So six months before the war, he was with the Eastern Fleet. He was asked to come and join the Western Fleet. And then on December 4 was the first attack. He was in charge of Operation Trident. So Trident was a stupendously successful operation. They sank three, naval, uh, they sank three Pakistan Navy ships. One was Khyber, the other one was Shah Jahan, and a, a minesweeper uh, PNS Mohafiz. There was also a merchant Navy ship that was speeding along that wouldn't stop. My father gave it three warnings to stop. Uh, that ship didn't stop. And as for international, international law, if the ship doesn't stop after three warnings, you can shoot. So he ordered for that ship also to be shot. And it was carrying uh, US ship carrying arms and ammunition to Pakistan. So that ship was also sunk. That was a huge catch. Then oil installations at Karachi port were also set on fire. Fire based on for days and days. So on the, it was almost the first day of the war. I think war started from the third and this was the fourth night. So already the seal was stamped for an early ceasefire by Operation Trident because Pakistan ran out of arms because that ship carrying arms was sunk. Pakistan ran out of fuel as well because Karachi port, uh, the oil installations were hit. So those two factors contributed greatly to an early ceasefire. And uh, before the war, uh, when the war was on fourth night, my father prayed and surrendered everything to the divine. And it was also the, birth, the death anniversary of his father. So he prayed to the Lord. He said if it's the Lord's wish that he join his father that night, then so be it. He surrendered everything to the Lord, whatever the outcome might be. He would do his duty to the best of his ability, and he was willing to give his life up but, you know, in that uh, duty as well. So, um, um, now, the and Operation Trident, it broke the very backbone of Karachi. It paralyzed Karachi totally. And the next morning, actually fifth morning, the Air Force had gone to carry out an operation to fire to, you know, Karachi oil insulation. When they went there, they already saw a fire burning. The Karachi port was already on fire. So they had nothing to do. They just went back. So Operation Trident was hugely successful. And another very important detail, because of the success of Operation Trident on December 4th, December 4th was chosen as Navy Day. And from then on, it's been celebrated as Navy Day. So that's an honor too, you know, for my father. So. Now I think uh, my brother will uh, speak. Uh, and then also after the war, they all 
went to Dwarka to Somnath Temple to offer their thanks to the Lord. And after that, when they went to Bombay, my father, the first thing he did was he got off the ship and went straight to Sharda Mat. Wanted to thank the Divine Mother for everything she had done. And my sister will speak about a wonderful talk my father gave to the sailors on the ship. My brother will talk about some other things now. Just before they start, uh, 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 Ms. Tara, I just wanted to ask you, uh, uh, how was your feeling? Uh, you knew that your dad was going for the war or uh, how small were you during that time? Uh, Our viewers I, I, would like to know about it. Yes. See, when my father was at war, see, a soldier's child is always afraid if the father will come back from the war or not. That fear is always there. You don't know whether he will come back or not, you know, so or the body back will come back. So um, we'd be so grateful to God that not only did he come back successful, but he also lived on for 50 years, you know, after the war. He died on, you know, the 50th anniversary of the war, he passed away. So we're very grateful that we had a 50-year bonus, you know. God gave us that. But a soldier's child is always afraid. You know, father will come back or not. That's a natural thing, you know. How, how small were you at that time? I was uh, December 4th. I had just turned 12. 14. I had just turned 12 on December 1st of that oh. year. Oh, so, so you have some memories of yes. that as well. Uh, really uh, interesting and... Uh, uh, good to know about uh, your father's uh, action and how it had uh, brought uh, victory to uh, our uh, nation, our country, India. So now I request uh, Ms. Savita Rao. Uh, yes, Ms. Savita Rao, uh, what do you have to share about your dear dad, your hero dad? Uh, what memories do you have of him? Please do share it with our uh, viewers. Mr. Vinay Rao, uh, we heard your sister, Ms. Tara Rao, uh, explain about your dad's action and how he literally uh, blew up the uh, harbor. So what do you remember about your dear dad and uh, what was your experience about uh, him? Uh, in fact, uh, he told me Admiral Landa, when he appointed him the task force commander, he told him this operation is very important. Even if we lose men and uh, ships, he was, uh, he was prepared for it. But he said at any cost, this operation should be done. And uh, not only that, uh, rumors uh, during the war that uh, that uh, my father's ship had sunk and all. So after, the, actually on December 4th night, Admiral Nanda rang up Admiral Krishnan to tell him that my father had, was awarded the Navy's first Mahavir Chakra. So when my mother received the call in the night, she was scared that she, some bad news was there. She, she was scared to pick up the phone. So she just prayed and she picked up the phone. And Admiral Krishna said, congratulations. Your husband has won the Navy's first Mahavir Chakra. Wonderful. So, so this, was ha this happened on, I think, it, uh, on December 4th night or something. And I remember it was midnight. Ah. Even, I had, even the, the phone rang, even I, was, I had that fear. You know, as a child, I had some fear. Okay. Why, why so, uh, how, how did you feel when uh, you knew that your dad... Uh, was going uh, to the war and uh, how, uh, you know, scared or what was your experience or what was your feeling at that point of time? If you can recall, uh, Mr. Vinay. Yes. yes, I was around uh, six years old and my mother was very nervous, you know, all the time praying, praying. So for my, my mother's body language, I had some fear, whether my father returned or not, you know, that fear was there. Yes. That was my experience. We, uh, there was a gentleman on board my father's ship when he went to, went to war. Hmm. And I, I had Siltan. His name was, uh, his name is uh, Gurubhajan Singh Ji. He was the, at that time, he was the ER artificer of course, the engine room artificer of course. Today, he retired as a commander. And he has a very interesting story to narrate about my father just before they went, before they struck. Uh, you know, struck ships in Karachi. So um, he said that that night, all the senior sailors were gripped with panic, anxiety, and fear that they may lose their lives and what would happen to their families if that happened. And uh, for my father on the ship broadcasting, spoke just for about a minute. And um, I just want to, I just want to quote what he said. So I'm just going to read out what he said. Um, 
He's a command, 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 my father was commander then. Commander KP Gopalra was a very good leader. He used to motivate and inspire us to learn about our professional competence and work as a team. He said, I started my career with P31 as ERA4 on board INS Kilsan. Um, and I wanted to emphasize what I learned from Commander Gopal Rao, um, INS Kilsan, um, who was a great leader. And he said, just before starting the first naval attack on Karachi on 4th December 1971, when almost all senior sailors were worried about what will happen to their families if they die, and they were not able to concentrate on the duty at all. Um, at that point, Commander Gopal Rao, very calmly, but with a very motivated voice, spoke on the ship's broadcast, just about a minute, and he announced, this is not the time to think and get worried about the unknown future. True. It, is, it is time to concentrate on the job at hand and perfectly perform your duty in front of you. Because even if one person here does not do his duty properly, then not only he, but all of us will go down with the ship. So he said, please put, remove your fears, put it aside, remove your fear of dying. Concentrate on your task and then just focus on killing the enemy first. Then we will be safe and enjoy the victory throughout our lives. We were, I'm just quoting and quoting Guru Bhajan Singh Ji. And he said, after that, everybody was alert and they got onto the job. So what I want to actually say here, Shakuntala, is, you know, you can be very prepared with the war. You can, you can be, you can make all the good moves. Of course, everything is based on the Almighty's grace. There's nothing that a human being can do. Everything. But as a human being, to be that equipoised, First, he had to be equipoised in the middle of a very dangerous operation. Yes. Then he had his entire crew who was, who were literally sinking with fear, and he had to pull them up and make them feel he only had one minute to motivate them. So he must have been so conviction based yes. that this was duty, do or die. He had to go. He had to sally forth. And I attribute all of this. I don't even want to. Take, I don't even think I'm going to give credit to my father. I just want to say that. His uncle was a um, monk with the Ramakrishna Mutt. Okay. And he was very close to his uncle. Mm -hmm. And his uncle had a profound influence on my father. Okay. And Swami Vivekananda's teachings had a profound influence on my father. And I feel that this concept of being fearless, yes. of surrendering to the divine. True. And as the Nanda's words were prophetic, that at any cost, this operation has to be done. Yes. And my father went with that and to be fearless is one, but to motivate the entire team within a minute to be fearless is, is a heroic is a heroic task. It's a no mean feat by itself. And that in itself was winning, that, that in itself was, I think, winning another victory, a big victory there. Yes. And then the rest is divine grace and, you know, uh, I mean, we're extremely grateful to the Almighty for what happened later. So I think this is very important. And we also had heard about this. We learned this only after my father passed away, where this gentleman shared his experience with us. Oh, and I think that's... it's very profound that uh, yeah, his spiritual leaning was deeply, he was devoutly spiritual, he was very deeply. And I also met another gentleman at on Navy Day recently after my father had passed away. And he said, never did my father do anything. He never started anything unless he prayed to God in his ship. He had a small puja section. He prayed to God and only then he started everything. He would never do anything without praying. Now, these things we didn't know actually, you see. Yeah. So, so I, I would attribute that, you know, the I would give a lot of credit to Swami Ramakrishna Paramahansa and his teaching, Swami Vivekananda and my, and his uncle, Swami Vireshwananda, who was a, a renowned monk at RK Mart. He was the president of the RK Mart. Hmm. So I think that had a very profound impact on my father. True. Because it was one of the most dangerous operations. And to be in the middle of the sea with this, you know, with death facing you and then to motivate a team. It's not simple. Yes, you need that, you know, you know strength of the mind but, uh, is more important. Only a Strong spiritual belief, I think, would help you get negotiate this. 
Priya and true. Chan. True, true. And also, mm -hmm. he, he proved himself to be a very good leader who could, uh, you know, sort of uh, boost the morale of the team. And uh, from the negative part, it came down to the, I mean, it uh, shifted to the positive uh, attitude and frame yeah. of mind. And then they all, uh, together, they all won. That's wonderful. That's yes. wonderful. And so oh, well said, uh, Miss uh, Savita, that you need the uh, strength of the mind and uh, that spiritual strength in your dad has what, uh, you know, made him a person, what he is, the hero of uh, the war, literally. And I also want to say one thing, you asked us what we felt when he went to war. Yes. He disappeared. He just disappeared because those days we didn't have like a cell phone or communications were not so advanced. So I think about five or six months, he just disappeared. Okay. And uh, we didn't have much communication. So we were, there were apprehensions. And like my brother said, my mother's body language was one of, you know, she was so anxious that we all felt the same way. But like, you know, I think sometimes being very young can also help because we just went to the floor. Yes. And I was, I think, just, Nine years old at that time. So, so where were you at that time? I mean, where were you placed at we that time? Placed in Vishakapat. Oh, Vishakapat. Oh, that's okay. In fact, there are very long innings in Vishakapat, 1968, all the way up to 78. And I have to say that Vishakapatnam was one of the luckiest places for my father as far as career goes. He held, I think, six commanding positions in seven years. Sarah, can you correct me if I'm wrong? I think he had. He was he, he, we went to Vaisag, he was CEO of INS Kadma. Then he set up the Peta Training School. He was CEO of Peta Training School, CEO of Kiltan, CEO of Amba, Chief of Staff, Eastern Naval Command, then CEO of INS Sarkars. So, and we loved being in Vaisag. Yeah, we just have beautiful memories of Vaisag. And we also thank Vaisag because when we were there, the, the ship, that submarine Gazi sank. One night, you know, there was yes. a huge work. And at the same time, my father was not around. So it was, like, it was you know, when looking back, we just think of, we have beautiful memories of Isaac. We just have this wonderful Happy. memories and gratitude. Very school, very nice school. Yeah. Great friends. We're in touch with all our friends there. And I was lucky to go back in 2014, Shapandraji, with my father. Okay. Um, when INS Sakar celebrated Platinum Jubilee, 75 years of its existence. So all the different CEOs of INS Akas were invited mm -hmm. and I accompanied my father for that function. It was a very beautiful function. That's great. That's great. So nice to uh, hear uh, uh, you recall those good old golden years of uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, your uh, life with your uh, dad and uh, your, uh, your life in the sense, your... Uh, Tenure in Vizak. I want to add one small little detail here about Vivekananda. Yes, please. My father's family met Swami Vivekananda in 1897 when he had come to Madras. And my father's uncle was then five years old. Vivekananda took him in his lap and hugged him. Ooh. And then in 1914, his uncle finished his law degree and then joined the Rangushma Mutt as a monk. Okay. And then he became the president of Ramakrishna Mutt in Mission in 1966. And in 73, he set up Sharda Mutt, his uncle. So th those influences have been so profound on all of us, you know, True. on my father and all of us without even realizing it, you know, they just, uh, you know, through os like an osmotic process, you just absorb all those values, you know. Very true. Very true. Very, very true. I totally agree with you on this. These are some things which cannot be told or cannot be, no. uh, you know, uh, experienced. If you have to literally walk the path to understand it. Uh, incidents that people have told me about my father, I just thought Tara said he was a humble hero. He's really unassuming. And um, Guru Bhajan Singh Ji said, Commander Guru Bhajan Singh Ji said, when he was in Kainas Kiltan with him, uh, he said, as a commander, he would come down to our engine room pat us on our back, talk to us. It's something very, this is not the norm. And he said, we felt so good about ourselves. And he said, I rose from that position to a commander simply because your father believed in us. 
So he said we felt so good about ourselves that we wanted to give give our work a best shot. So these are small things that I think we sometimes take for granted. And uh, he never went with that pecking order. And then recently, I um, also heard from another gentleman in Chennai, Captain Ravi, who was, uh, he had just joined the Indian Navy and he was sub at that time. And my father was posted in Vishakapatnam and he was then the commanding officer of INS Sarkar. So Captain Ravi, who was then a sub was just, I think, walking in the hot sun somewhere there. And my father was driving, going in his car and he stopped, picked him up and gave him a ride and dropped him in the mess. So Captain Ravi said, these are not things that are the norm, but you know, so there are many people who have narrated such experiences I've had with my father. And, you know, he was very unassuming, humble. And like my brother said, regretted having shot a bird. Never mind how many ships he shot down, but regretted having shot a bird. So he was very duty bound, very humble, but behind that calm, sweet countenance was, was I think, you know, um, a, you know, a sort of a gun horse soldier who was not willing to give up his duty at any cost, you know. So this was his, uh, the two sides of his nature, you know. If you had met him, you would never have known that he would have done what he did. So that oh, uh, don't tell me. Like, uh, I was very young and uh, you uh, all finally came and settled in Chennai and... Uh, 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 I remember my dad talking about um, uh, Commodore Rao and uh, his, you know, his humility and uh, we were like, uh, you know, oh, some, uh, we've got some uh, person from the defense services in our community and we would look upon your dad like one, uh, as you said, one hero is gone for the, to the war and come back. So now I realized how, uh, uh, you know, what was this contribution in the 1971 war? I, if I look back, I uh, dazzled by his uh, presence, literally. And I think Chakundraji, I also want to add, his humility is again because of his surrender to the Lord, his spiritual leaning, you know, not taking full responsibility of what he has done, but, you know, understanding that it was yes. God. He was very yes, humble. Yes. yes. True, and he was so unassuming, talking to all of us, you know, uh, inquiring about us. So it's, uh, yeah. Another story I just heard recently at the Navy Day. There was one gentleman who just wanted to meet my father and ask him some answers to some questions he had. So he said, I decided to just barge into his office. And so, of course, it stopped, and staff stopped him and said, you can't do that. So this, this gentleman said, at least ask him if I can come in. So they went and asked my father. My father said, yeah, let him come in. If he wants to talk to me, let him come. And he spoke at length to my father. My father addressed all his questions. And he later on ended up joining the Navy. And he said, that was the reason why I joined the Navy. Wow. Another man who said he was, he had gone for a talk to this Anandanam Arts College. He just went and listened to my father speak. He was the chief guest there. And my father spoke on his life in the Navy. He said the talk was so inspiring that he decided that day that he would join the Navy. And he's based in Chennai. And he joined the Navy. There are many stories we've heard. Amazing. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Savita, now about your mom. How is she doing? How is she now? And she, uh, I, think, I just want to say that she was a very, um, you know, throughout the war, she was extremely anxious and uh, extremely worried as she would rightfully be and I think she she again I think reposed all of faith in God and just held on to that belief went through that you know that process unfortunately the last I think year and a half or two she's been she was diagnosed with dementia so she's 89 years old now um, she's got dementia so she doesn't remember much but despite all of this she remembers my father and certain incidents but not, she can't recollect everything anymore. That is why she's not on air with us. My pronouns to her and, uh, you know, may God uh, uh, keep you all safe. That's my prayers. There were three occasions to felicitate him. The first was the governor of Madras. Then the Navy gave him, felicitated him. And then the chief minister of Tamil Nadu. And Sabi, you took him to the governor's uh, function. Tell us what happened that day. 
And my father yeah. has a terrific sense of humor. We forgot to mention that. Terrific sense of humor and great wit. Very quick-witted he was. You know, the, uh, the, this invitation of, of him join, being felicitated by the Honorable Governor was, you know, had come to us. And there was like a mini war in my own house because my brother and sister didn't want him to attend the function because they feared for his health. You know, he was ailing. COVID. COVID. Something in me, I don't know what gripped me because I was taking care of him largely. And somehow I, I had decided that I wanted him to go for this function. I don't know. Something in me said he has to go for this. So I prepared myself. Eventually, my sister and brother relented and we went. So my father hadn't gone out for a long time because of the pandemic. So when we went in the car, it was like a, you know, he appeared like an excited child, just absorbing all the scenery around him because he just been in his room. Then when we got to the venue, we had the doctors, the routine checkup on him. <coughs> Excuse me. And at that time, they were just checking and asking him how he was. And with a glint in his eye, Pat came his reply. He said, I'm not ready to go as yet. You know, and then when we went to meet the governor, because he was in a wheelchair, the governor came towards him. And uh, Governor Banwari Lal Purohit was so patient with him. And he talked to him for a while. And then he said, I'm so proud to be the real life hero. By now, my father was visibly moved. He could understand everything that was happening. <clears throat> and then the governor saluted him said Jai Hind and my father returned a salute, your salute the governor. And when we returned, my father was, he said, this was the best evening of my life. So I was so grateful that he could relive the glory of the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, one was he was, he enjoyed the 1971 post of war and all the celebrations, the felicitations. But 50 years later to be alive, we still able to attend that function despite his health condition it was no mean feat. And that was again a blessing and forever grateful that his last outing turned out to be his best. Very, very, very grateful. And I want to just come up with one quote from Swami Vivekananda about him. I just think it really um, sums up my father's life very well. So Vivekananda has said, let the world say, what it, what it chooses. I shall tread the path of duty. Know this to be the line of action for a hero. Yes. You know, I so think well this said. best describes him. Yes. True. So, dear viewers, so, um, you know, post the war, and we celebrated the Swarnam Vijay Divas of the 1971 war. So what uh, does uh, Commodore uh, Rao had to say on this? Rao's family, interesting. Do like and subscribe to our channel. Jai Hind and Jai Bharat.